What's up guys, Jason from Wedding Film School here with a 30 Weddings Later review of the Zion Weevil 3. Between myself, Jay, and Jared, we have logged well over 30 weddings shot with the Weevil 3 gimbal. Do I even use this weird light ever? Like, So we thought that we'd circle back on our initial review and let you all know our thoughts after a full wedding season. And the results might surprise you. So this is the Weevil 3. Um, at this point, it's the newest gimbal uh, made by Zion. Uh, Zion. 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 I don't know. However you say the name, Zion has been making affordable and generally well-loved gear, perfect for wedding filmmakers for many years. I remember the first time I used the Crane gimbal back in 2016 and thought, this thing is going to change the game for wedding filmmaking. It's so affordable, it's awesome. And in many ways, it did. The whole single hand grip style gimbal was basically started by Zayun and many other companies have come along, maybe added, maybe changed to this style of gimbal, but I believe it's the dominant style of gimbal for wedding filmmaking. As always at Wedding Film School, um, our focus is on wedding filmmaking. And so we look at gimbals um, and we look at gear and we try to keep in mind that wedding filmmaking and event coverage in general are kind of unique production environments. And as such, we're focused on what makes a piece of gear most useful or frustrating for wedding filmmakers. So if you aren't a wedding filmmaker and you hear some of the stuff that we're talking about and you totally disagree, maybe it's because you're using it a little differently than we are. And if the gear works for you, Great, who cares what I say? One of the great things about Wedding Film School is that because there are multiple people on the team, we have the ability to offer different perspectives from different experiences. So I wanted to be sure to pop in and share my experience with this gimbal as well, so that you all get multiple viewpoints on using the Weevil 3 gimbal after a full wedding season. Now, as a filmmaker myself, I've owned many gimbals over the years. Um, by DJI, Zayun, all the different people, probably at least 10 different models. And I've always enjoyed Zayun's mix of value and functionality. So when the Weevil 3 came out, I was really psyched. Uh, they were nice enough to send us one and we bought two of our own. Bobby reviewed it on the channel, so go check that out. And he liked it so much, he retired his OG crane for it. That's true, I did, but more on that later. The Weevil 3 casts aside the uh, two-handed lab style grip of the Weevil 2 for a new style with uh, this detachable handle and this really interesting wrist rest. It also boasts beefier motors and improved stabilization algorithm. It's got all the standard camera integrations we've come to expect from a modern gimbal, but it's also got a ton of weird features like this light right here or a built-in noise canceling microphone, stuff that we never would have asked for, but that's pretty cool to have. I think the first question with any gimbal um, because it's such a tactile tool is, is it nice to shoot with? And, and I can say unequivocally that the Weeble 3 is a great feeling gimbal. Um, the extra motor power is much appreciated with my favorite telephoto gimbal rig. And the new stabilization algorithm truly makes the Weeble 3 one of the most responsive gimbals I've ever shot with. It's, it's hard to describe, but anyone who's used a gimbal knows that they all have their own kind of particular vibe, right? Like no matter how you adjust them, they all have their own character. Some gimbals are just too squishy and too soft for me. And some are just too tight and too snappy for me. The Weeble 3 feels just right to me and it's a joy to shoot with. It just feels like connected while not being overly jumpy, meaning less redos on the gimbal moves on the wedding day and more footage that I don't need to recompose in post. As Jay mentioned for the first time in many, many gimbal reviews, the Weeble 3 got me to lay my old original crane to rest and I really haven't looked back since. And I think this first question of, is it nice to shoot with, is what the Weeble ultimately has going for it most. The controls on this thing are really solid and really easy to get used to. Although this roll wheel right here in the front, pretty easy to accidentally hit. And I also find that I always end up accidentally hitting this switch and going between modes or spinning my camera around or doing things like that, which is pretty typical with gimbals. Um, but that can be chalked up to user error. Like, I suck at holding gimbals, maybe. So I'm gonna echo most of what Jay said here. As I mentioned in my original review, it just feels right. I also wanna say, at least in my experience, I don't find myself bumping buttons or wheels too often, but I am left-handed, which might play a role in that. With how many new features they tried to jam into the Weeble 3, I think the next question is, do the new features really add much to the overall filmmaking experience? And I feel like that's always a tough question to answer. You know, you pick up a piece of gear like this and you go, wow, a light, that's so cool. I might actually use that on the dance floor. Or I might do this, or I might do that. And then you don't really do it, like one time. It just never became part of my workflow and I don't really know why. I'll admit guys, 
I'm a bit stuck in my ways when it comes to gimbals. I don't bother hooking up any of the USB cables. I don't even use a monitor or camera control system. I just shoot the way I've always shot and that works for me. And I think many of us are the same way. So when a manufacturer kind of introduces a new feature that might be innovative, I often find it hard to implement them. I did find the wrist rest to be pretty awesome and I miss not having one when I don't. So that's pretty cool. I found the removable handle to be meh at best. It didn't hurt, but I would often forget to put it on entirely and I didn't really find that it hurt the experience on a wedding day much. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree on the light and the mic here while flashy, get it? Cause like, it's a light. While flashy when it first was announced, it really doesn't do anything for me and I'm just not using it. Um, in fact, I haven't used it at all. Not even once, the mic or the light. Okay, I did one time and it was an accident. It looked pretty good. But I do actually have the opposite opinion when it comes to the wrist rest and the handle. If you watched my initial review, you'll know that the wrist rest, as far as I could tell, could only mount on the right side of the gimbal, which in turn made it useless for those who are left-handed like me but I actually love the offset side handle and I feel it gives me much more control and stabilization, especially with slow moves. Further, I was not a fan of the handle placement found on the Weeble 2 or the Crane 3, the one that was like back and up here, and I much prefer this placement. Bring back the lab style. Bring back the lab style handle. It's better. The fact that some features didn't become part of my workflow on a wedding day after 30 weddings doesn't really mean the new feature like the light or the microphone are bad, but as wedding filmmaker, I found them unnecessary and they didn't really add much. It's not like they hurt my experience with the gimbal, or did they? You see, the deeper question for gear, whenever you get a lot of new features is, what did they not do during R&D when they were spending their time adding this light or microphone? Or maybe even better question is, how is it still so cheap with all these extra features and parts? And this is where I get into my final and most critical part of this 30 weddings with review. Maybe they should have spent more time on the design and build quality than maybe a bunch of extra features that no one was asking for. Because I really believe reliability is the most important aspect of any gear when it comes to wedding filmmaking, especially something as high touch as a gimbal. How does it hold up? is the real question, because in wedding filmmaking, the best ability is availability. Thanks for that quote, Coach B. I'm sad to report that after 30 weddings, well, really after two weddings, um, the flaws in the design and the build quality on the Weeble 3 became pretty glaring. Um, and before I break down my concerns, I have to say that between Bobby, myself, and Jared, we had three Weeble 3s. Two of them we paid for, one of them was given to us. Jay reached out to me about this video concept and we were a bit shocked to find that we had very different experiences with the Weeble 3. First thing you'll notice when you pick up this thing is how light it is. It is really light. I think they say like two and a half pounds. And many of you, that's a great thing, but I also think it leads to some of its issues. It's just not tough enough. The second wedding I shot with this gimbal, the roll access lock on this thing just like broke, like just got stuck and we had to take it apart and disable the lock to even use it at weddings. The second issue I had is a way bigger problem. It seems that the joint or tightening mechanism right here that connects this tilt access to this vertical arm right here is a little flimsy and it often slips and just kind of falls down and doesn't tighten at all throughout the day. It like slips a lot. Like you bump it and it goes thoop, out of nowhere. This is bad because this has an internal battery, which by the way, I didn't mention before, but I found the internal battery to be really nice and it lasted all day. So that's a good thing. Still, when you have an access that slips throughout the day, it means that your gimbal is becoming unbalanced and it wastes more battery and it's harder to operate. It's kind of a pain. But worse, because it's not tight, the roll axis is always tilted slightly to the left, meaning that you have to manually roll that little wheel to get a straight horizon all day. Again, this also means that your roll balance is never truly correct in that whenever you double tap the front trigger to reset your gimbal center, something I do a lot, this gimbal needs to be adjusted again just to get a straight horizon. This is really, really problematic in the heat of battle when you're shooting. If you forget to do it, you come back and you look at all your footage and everything's While I agree, I would have liked for them to focus a bit more on build quality and sacrifice some of the things that I don't use like the mic and the light. Ultimately, I really haven't had many problems with mine. I've not experienced any of the joint slipping, the motors failing or anything like that. In fact, the one thing that I will say to build quality is that I wish the locks felt a little bit more solid. 
I sometimes have to wiggle the axis around to get the lock in place perfectly, and it does feel slightly less secure than I'd like, but hey, all my locks, they still function perfectly. However, one more important note that I wanna be sure to touch on is that unlike Jay, I absolutely baby my gear. I am not nice to my gear. <gasps> Battle! Which gamble will win? I'm broken! I win! I'm the non-broken gimbal. Not nice at all. I am hyper aware of how it sits in my car, how much weight might be pushing on a motor or a potential brake point. Heck, I never even put this thing in a bag except in its own compartment in my backpack and only when I need to fly with it. Needless to say, that might play a big role because my gimbals really don't take a beating. While I love the new wrist rest and how the gimbal handles, and I even like the internal battery, some of the new features are pretty meh at best for wedding filmmaking. Didn't really use a lot of them, really. And the build quality for wedding filmmakers is pretty debatable. Now, if you're on a budget, really nice to your gear, or happen to get a good one, you're gonna love this gimbal. But if you're concerned about build quality and reliability, you may wanna spend a little more for a beefier gimbal. You know I have two different perspectives on a variety of features of this gimbal, and we hope that you find it helpful. If you're a wedding filmmaker, be sure to like and subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff, but most importantly, we wanna hear from you down below in the comments. If you're using the Weeble 3, what has your experience been like? And if you think there's something better out there for wedding filmmakers, drop it down below as well. Go click on over to one of our many other videos, including gear reviews, behind the scenes, business strategies, live film critiques, our podcast, and more. And we will see you in the next video.